Okay, this is from an audio book that was put out 2010. I like this this cover. This cover is kind of um, this visual here is kind of uh, dramatic, but pretty accurate as well. But one thing that gets confused is which Enoch, which Enoch are we speaking of? Some of y'all might be familiar with something called the um, the Slavic. That's known as the Slavic. Uh, book of the Slavic book of uh, Enoch and that's found in the lost books of the Bible and the forgotten books of Eden many of us for many of us that was like a, a, a treasure trove of additional books that in latter Christianity or whitewashed Christianity when they started to um, delete books and take books out the Bible that was one reference source of many um, early Christian documents, which were known to the the early, or we we'll call the, the 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 truer generation of Christians around, like the first, the second, the third, fourth, and even some centuries after that. But as we come to the Common Era, these books have been removed. But in that particular book, it has um, a couple of original Ethiopic documents, such as the book of Adam and Eve, but then it has this, this what we consider to be a fake Slavic Enoch, and that was the only Enoch, book of Enoch, that was known until, um, I think it was James, Sir James Bruce, an explorer, um, traveler, Travel to reach the headwaters of the Nile, and he has a series of books that were published in the 17, in the 18th century, 1700, so forth and so on. But he's one who was to bring back one of the first copies of the original book of Enoch that was quoted by many of the biblical writers, in other words, we find the book of Enoch being quoted directly throughout the New Testament. So this means that the book of Enoch was known to the Savior, to Adonai Yeshua, Yehoshua HaMoshiach, or Getachin Jesus Christos, our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It was known to his black and Ethiopian Hebrew apostles in that first century of Christianity. So the Ethiopic book of Enoch, when we study the Ethiopic book of Enoch, we find many of the quotes in the New Testament with a reference source to the Ethiopic book of Enoch and not to the so-called Slavic, the Slavic book of Enoch. So there's these two different scriptures, and if you you don't do due diligence, you might confuse one with the other. Now, in such confusion, there's what we've been speaking on, the two Enochs, because we often hear a lot about this guy. Let's see if we can bring this guy up. We hear a lot about this particular guy right here. You understand? Somebody known as um, John D. And John D. is attributed to him something called uh, Enochian, Enochian uh, magic, Enochian magic. We can call it sorcery and witchcraft, but we have to, first of all, ask ourselves, why does or did John D. call this Enochian magic? Now, we know that the Enochian magic or his, his process was communicating with um, demons, spirits, but not God. Notice in his magical system, he's not communicating with any true angels of God or with God, but he's communicating with angels, fallen angels, and demons. Now, we have to go back to the beginning in order to really understand the difference between John Dee's so-called Enochian magic and the true Ethiopic book of Enoch. So when we turn our scriptures, when we go to the scriptures, for, for an example, if we, if we would open our Bibles and we go to Genesis chapter 4, and we go to Genesis chapter 4, we'll find which Enoch, you understand, 
um, John D. was channeling. And it's the Enoch who is descended from the line of Cain. And Cain was the murderer, devil, from the beginning. And we find this right here in verse 17. We find in verse 17 right here where it says, And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bear, you see the name? Enoch. And bear Enoch. And he built, builded a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch, right? His son Enoch. So what generation is this? Adam is the presumed father of Cain, although we learn from the Savior, from Yeshua HaMoshia, that the devil, the devil was Cain's father. Remember when Christ argued with the so-called religious Jewish scholars of that time, the Pharisees and Sadducees, and he said, we're Abraham's children. And he said, if you was Abraham's children, you would love me, but you are children of the devil. The devil is your father, for he was a what? A murderer from the beginning. And we know that Cain is the first murderer on our record and the record that Christ will be referring to. But he had a son named Enoch. Now, this Enoch should not be confused with the Ethiopic Enoch, but this Enoch, the son of Cain, this is the one whom this fellow right here, John D., this is who, this is who he was channeling. This is John D., this is at the, at the root of John D., so-called Enochian magic. But that needs to be distinguished from the true Enoch. So do we have a testimony of the true Enoch? Yes, we do have a testimony of the true Enoch. Where will we find this testimony of the true Enoch? We will find it in our Bible. So let's document this. Let's go to the book of Jude, New Testament, the book of Jude. So when we go to the New Testament, the book of, of Jude, Yehuda, the book, yeah, Yehuda, Amalekit, uh, we go to, it's just one chapter, people, so don't ask what chapter. Jude is just one chapter. But when we get to this book, Jude, and here we go right here, the Jude, we go to, let's go roughly to, um, let's go roughly to, uh, what, which verse should we begin because he's going to mention what generation here we go verse 14 and 15 verse 14 and 15 where it says and Enoch also the seventh from Adam now the Enoch who was the son of Cain and Cain the presumed son of Adam was not the seventh so we're speaking of another Enoch so this teaches us an important lesson right here that similarity in name does not mean we're speaking of the same being or the same entity. And this confuses a lot of folks today. A lot of folks, they know or have heard about the Ethiopic Enoch, and then they hear about Enochian magic, and they think it's one and the same thing. But this is from two different lines, two different descent, two different spirits much like what we have here in this side-by-side, -side, the true Enoch, the Ethiopic Enoch, or Enoch the Ethiopian. And here we have John D. channeling or scrying a magical witchcraft sorcery system which is being currently employed and utilized in this end time by a lot of the musical artists and their handlers, the Illuminati, the Freemasons, all the Babylonians are down with this because, as Christ says, you are of your father. They are of their father, who is a what? A murderer from the beginning. Now, Jude, the one chapter of Jude, it tells us something very interesting right here. It tells us right here in this very same chapter, because it's going to speak about Cain. 
In verse 11, it says, Woe to them, royal Lacho, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the era of Balaam. Now, Balaam is interesting. We, 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 we spoke about Balaam a little bit earlier in the earlier part of this two Enoch, this two Enoch series right here. Now, Balaam, if you want to document it, Numbers chapter 22 and 5, the era of Balaam must be distinguished from his way. In other words, in the Bible, it will speak about the era of Balaam, and it will also speak about the way of Balaam. Now, the, the way of Balaam is spoken in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 15, and in the Schofield, there's an important note there. And then Revelation chapter 2, verse 14, speaks of the doctrine, which is the teaching of Balaam. But what is the error? Error, we're going to deal with the error right here. The error of Balaam was that reasoning from natural morality. This is what a lot of these Illuminati, so-called Illuminati artists and people and ones who are willingly or unwillingly part of the matrix, this is what they reason from natural morality. And seeing the evil in Israel, the lost sheep, he supposed a righteous God must curse them. He was blind. So we find there's a blindness associated with the era of Balaam to the higher morality of the Mescal, to the higher morality of the cross. And this is why we touched on Oprah, on Old Bra. When Old Bra was speaking about how she got away from the church because the preacher was preaching the old rugged cross and was talking about the commandments, saying that God is a jealous or a zealous God, and she immediately misunderstood in the confusion of her mind that God was somehow jealous uh, of her instead of jealous for her. So it, it, it shows this, this faultiness in the in their reasoning and the blindness to the higher morality of the cross of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through which God, or Jah, if you please, maintains and enforces the authority and the awful sanctions of his law so that he can be just and the justifier of the sinner who exercises faith, who exercises witness and faith to the truth of the testimony of our black Lord and Savior and recognizes the need for repentance and, and begins to work out their salvation in, in that fear and that trembling. Now, the reward of verse, of verse 11 may not be money, but popularity or applause. So when we get to verse 11, we find it says, Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the era of Balaam for reward. Not necessarily for money. And, and this was interesting with the vid that we've just been watching on the industry. There's a vid out there. You probably can see some of the selected parts. Hopefully the society will have the full the full series, and we're working on that, so go to Doc Videos on the LOJSociety.org page, check on Doc Videos, and look for the industry, but you can see the clip out there on the internet where um, this so-called uh, lad, laddie, or laddie named Gaga, where Gaga was talking about she don't want no money, or he don't want, or it don't want no money, they don't want no money. They want your soul. But it's interesting that many of y'all will think when you when you sell your soul to Satan, and hopefully you don't, but when these individuals are sold their soul to Satan, they recognize it's not about the money. The money is the talisman. For them, they go to the higher level, and it's about popularity. It's about applause. It is about, it is about that fame. But the word goes on to explain that these are spots, 
spots to say like impurities. These are spots in your feast of charity, in your feast of love. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. They feed themselves without any sort of reverence. That means they are like vampires. They will feed even on you. They are clouds that don't have got no water. They're carried about of winds. They are trees whose fruit withereth. You understand? They said judge a tree by its fruit, but the fruit that the fruit of these trees wither. They're without fruit. They're twice dead. Plucked up by the root. Raging waves of the sea foaming out their own chain, their wandering stars. I think this is the most interesting, most interesting, you know, speaking about both wandering and stars. Because these are stars. These are your stars, right? Not the ones in the heaven, not the ones that Jah created, but the ones that, that man and Satan has superimposed upon. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. You understand the black hole, the void. And Enoch, now see this is our Enoch right here. And Enoch also and identifies him. I always wondered why when it says here in Jude, Enoch also the seventh from Adam. You know, reading over this many times and you come across and you wonder, oh, oh, why did it specify right there between the commas, the seventh from Adam, comma. I mean, we know we know it's Enoch, right? The Ethiopic Enoch, don't we? The one who was translated, who did not who did not taste of death, but was was translated to the heavens. But the key is because there's two Enochs here. We find that the first Enoch, before this Enoch, the seventh from Adam was born, there was an earlier Enoch, and that Enoch was a son of Cain. Now, this judgment here is going to speak about these Cainites, these children of Cain. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, of these. And I'm going to use motherfuckers. I'm going to call them what they are. You understand? Because, because the mother, think about it for a moment, they've polluted this earth. See how they've destroyed Africa. See how they have destroyed true motherhood and created monsters. So these Enoch prophesied of, not the Enoch who was, who was the descendant of uh, Cain's son, but the Enoch from Seth, the Enoch from, from Adam's son, prophesied of these. The true son of man was Seth. Cain became a beast. Cain became a monster, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. So this is what Enoch, the true Enoch, prophesied, that Adonai will come with ten thousand of his caduceon to do what? To execute judgment. You see, judgment upon all. This is where we're moving to people. And to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed. A theme is here, ungodly, ungodly, ungodly. All that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds. So they're not just ungodly because somebody gave them a name, ungodly, but their deeds show that they're ungodly. And it shows that they have committed these things, not just by accident or mistake, but they've committed these things in a purposefully ungodly way. And of all their hard speeches, which ungodly, again, ungodly sinners. Now we define them not just as sinners, somebody who made a mistake or, or erred, you understand, but they are ungodly sinners. So there is, according to English law, and John D. would be familiar with this sort of expression, there was malice a forethought. You've heard of that expression before? It's, it's an actual legal, English legal expression. Malice of forethought. And that's part of the Enochian ma magic, that malice of forethought. To think previously. So all of those who are ungodly have spoken against him. And as this system has spoken against the king of kings, Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, Kedusa, Batachin. But these who are they, 
they think they live, but they're dead. These are murmurers. They're complainers, walking after their own ungodly lust. Now, that, that's a big topic there. You know what I mean? When we, when we think about the driving motivation of this last time generation, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, like that title on, on the 1970s, I think it was, was Newsweek or whatever, says, um, Is God Dead? Hey, what kind of big swelling words are these? But they have men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles, the true apostles. It's not talking about of the popes. It's not talking about no cardinals. You understand? No, no preachers or the pastors. No, we're speaking about the apostles of Getachin Jesus Christos, the apostles of Adonenu Yeshua HaMoshiach, the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers. You see, so when we see that there's mockers, we should say hallelujah. Why? Because we see the word being fulfilled. But we have to read further, study further, and, and, and do the will of God in Christ. Because they told you, they told us that there should be mockers in the last time. These are the last times they're trying to fool people with a new world order. There is no new world order to Satan and his fallen angels and his human accomplices. This is their last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit, but ye, brothers and sisters, beloved, building. What, what must we be about? Building up yourselves. We must build up ourselves upon what? Upon our most holy faith. Praying in the Memphis Caduce, praying in the Holy Spirit. They try to throw this little ghost thing in here. You can strike that. That's really Holy Spirit. That's a blasphemy calling the Holy Spirit a ghost. The Holy Spirit is a Holy Spirit. A ghost, a disembodied spirit of a dead person, that's not holy. Check your Bibles. Verse 21, keep yourselves. You have to keep yourselves. You know, there's effort. You just can't be loose. About you got to keep yourselves in the love of Jah, in the love of God, looking for the mercy of Getachni Jesus Christos to eternal life. And of some, of some of these Babylonians and, and of some of them, uh, have compassion, making a difference. Some of them, uh, some of them will flip. In other words, they'll flip and become the king of kings evidence against Satan. Some of these same ones you see out there running with the beast doing all this madness because the love of Jah in Christ, you understand, is eternal. And, and if one's here, and you, if they hear, if they heed, you understand, if they, if they repent, if they repent and they expose John will have compassion, and we also must have compassion, as the word says right here, making a difference. And others, others of them we save with fear, not with weakness, not with, not with dumbing down and watering down the gospel, the good news, the Bible, or, or, or not using the truth of God as our evidence, but save them with fear. Yes, speaking about this judgment, speaking about the, 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 the lake of, of fire, pulling them out of the fire. You, you over? See, with that fear, see, a lot of them think it's a joke. They think all this Google Gaga madness is a joke out there. You know, it's just, a, you know, it's just like a fun thing. It's a, oh, just on the Internet. No, it's deeper than that. And, and we have to preach and proclaim it with that, with that compassion as well as with that reverence or with that fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. They've done a lot of things ungodly in the lust of their flesh. So their flesh is spotted, you know. We hear about these ones bisexual and these ones might have been lesbian.